Okay guys, so CinemaCon, the Paramount panel, just wrapped up a few hours ago, earlier today at the time of this recording, and we have some pretty cool news for Transformers 1 and the sequel to Rise of the Beast. So first up here, let's talk about the Transformers 1 stuff. So they revealed the logo and the logo drop for it, and it looks really, really good. Uh, when I first saw this, it reminds me of the logos that Hasbro used to do back in like the early 2010s and the late 2000s, like for Generations, Reveal the Shield, Prime, and stuff like that. It really brings me back to that whole era of Transformers, so I really do think this design works, and it is really dope looking. And on top of the logo and title drop reveal for one, they showed off a trailer and a clip from the movie. And we have a description here that was uploaded. TFW gathered together uh, some pieces of information that people were uh, putting out there on Twitter and all over social media. And they just gathered it here together. I'm going to read it for you guys and give you all my opinion on it, as always. So, first up here, let's... Uh, okay. The story is all new, not tied to any previous movie, show, or game. It's an origin story for Optimus and Megatron. It starts with Optimus and Megatron making friends as Orion and D-16, both worker-type bots who live completely underground on Cybertron. Neither of them can transform. They connect with Bumblebee, B-127, and the three attempt to escape upwards to the surface of Cybertron. They meet Alita-1, who wants to turn them in, and a visually impressive chase happens, including on top of a moving train in the sky. They eventually gain the ability to transform. M music from the Rolling Stones was playing during the montage sequence. Faces are human-like, less robotic. Cybertron is vibrant and busy, not war-torn. There is a lot of comedy going on, especially from Bumblebee. The clip caps out with them making it up top and seeing their first sunset. Bumblebee tries to get Elita-1 to join them. They are on a quest to find Sentinel Prime in the Matrix of Leadership. And then they say here, P.S. Chris Hemsworth is using an American accent for Optimus and not a Thordimus Prime. So that's pretty good there. Um, I'm glad Chris Hemsworth is changing up his voice for Optimus as he should. Uh, so there's quite a bit to unpack here. So Optimus and Megatron are, are workers together underground, it seems like. I don't know if there's maybe some information that was misinformed between translations from posting to social media and stuff like that, you know, because not, not everybody who's posting this stuff on Twitter is the most knowledgeable Transformers fan out there. So maybe some people got that all mixed up with Optimus and Megatron working together as miners. Maybe, maybe they just work in the same vicinity or something like that. I don't know. But if that is true, they changed the origin to where they're both miners working underground together. I don't mind that at all. I think it could work depending on how they execute it uh yeah so i'm pretty open to that um and the thing with bumblebee uh being a minor too it seems like in in meeting up with optimus and megatron right off the bat like that i don't know um again it's not really something i mind i mean it's a change it's something that happens transformers always changes and evolves with the origin story throughout each continuity it is what it is but i don't know it just feels like they're trying to shoehorn in bumblebee any chance they get still to this day almost 20 years after the 2007 movie when that changed everything for bumblebee and hasbro just thought they needed to push bumblebee into every single piece of transformers media I don't know. I think they could have used a different character for a beginning of what we know Transformers as today. Because I always saw Bumblebee as this character that came along after all this uh, origin story stuff happened. I like he's he's supposed to be such a young vibrant type character that I just don't see how why he would tie into the beginning of it all. Uh, like this, like what they're like what they're seemingly trying to do here, but I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Uh, and the fact that Alita One is more of like a uh, a political 
uh, figure type or like a cop or whatever trying to arrest them. That's interesting. That's a bit of a different take there for Alita that I don't mind. It's kind of still in character for her, so that's pretty cool. And I'm really curious to see what the visuals are like because it seems like there's some cool stuff going on there with the moving train in the sky and them especially talking about how cool the animation looks all these people that were at CinemaCon who saw this footage so that's really really that's a really good sign i i'm really curious to see how that animation looks and the music choice rolling stones that's that's a bit different um well i mean they've obviously used rock a lot in transformers over the years but uh, you know, I would have never guessed they would have used Rolling, Rolling Stones for the first trailer for Transformers 1, honestly. But hey, I'm not against it. It'll probably sound cool. And the whole thing of the quest to find Sentinel Prime in the Matrix, uh, it's an interesting spin to it. Um, I don't, I, I mean, obviously they don't go into detail on why they're trying to find Sentinel in the Matrix, but I don't know. I, I mean, there's so much new going on here with the origin story of how everything gets jump started on Cybertron and how the Autobots and the Decepticons form. It seems like so we just re we really just have to wait and see until we get more info, see more footage, and obviously you know go see the movie when it finally comes out. Uh, so they they showed off the trailer. They showed off this clip. It seems like with Alita One. And that's about it for Transformers 1. The trailer for it is supposed to drop next week, Thursday on the 18th. It's supposed to be the same uh, trailer that was shown at CinemaCon, I think. So stay tuned for that. I might do a reaction video or something. And the last piece of news is they finally officially announced the Transformers and G.I. Joe crossover movie that is going to be coming out in 2026. And yeah, that's that's about it. I mean, and they also said here Steven Spielberg is is an executive producer on this, which is very interesting that he's attached to a Transformers live action project again. Because I think the last time he was was in either Age of Extinction or Dark of the Moon. I think he got out after one of those movies. So that might be a good sign that he's back involved, and maybe that'll direct the story a bit better. Uh, and I do hope Stephen Kappel Jr. returns. I do think he's a pretty great director for the franchise. He at least seems to have a good or decent knowledge of the Transformers, and he seems to care enough about the characters more than, say, maybe Michael Bay did, you know? So, um, you know, hopefully this is good. I know a lot of people out there don't, care or are not enthusiastic about Transformers crossing over with G.I. Joe, but hey, as long as they bring in the Decepticons, this is what I've been saying for over a year now, as long as Megatron and the Decepticons are the main villains of this next one, because it's it was basically set up that way for Rise of the Beasts, for the sequel to be more Decepticon focused, they alluded to it in certain scenes here and there in Rise of the Beast. So it just makes sense for the Decepticons to finally arrive on Earth, for them to be the main villains, and the reason why the Joes and the Autobots team up in the first place, with the alluding threat and references to Unicron and the Terracons. If, if the Terracons and Unicron are the main villains again, then I would say, yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. But if they go the route that I'm thinking they're going to go in, this could be a pretty good movie. And especially with the whole Skybound thing going on with the comics, the G.I. Joe and Transformers crossing over in the comics too, if they take inspiration from that, I think it could really work. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really cautiously optimistic about this. I'm not hating on it just yet. This could be a pretty good movie. It could be bad. I don't know. We barely know anything about this. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty Pretty much it for this video guys let me know let me know down in the comments below what do y'all think about the gi joe and transformers movie officially being announced for 2026 what do you guys think about the footage details for transformers 1 all my social medias are linked down below my email is also linked down below if y'all want to hit me up about business inquiries or if you want to message me about whatever 
Or if you want to subscribe to my new Patreon link down below, it's got tons of exclusive content that you won't see here on YouTube, such as exclusive stop motions, transformers photography. You guys get one week in advance before everybody else here on YouTube to my stop motion films. You guys get Discord access. You guys get sneak peeks at projects I'm working on, such as my diorama, stop motions and videos and photography. You guys get exclusive music that I use in my stop motion films and probably a couple other things I'm forgetting. But yeah, if you want to help support me and help support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank y'all for watching this video. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye!